Hey everyone, welcome back to the North American Challenger Series. We're moments away now from our second game in this series between Team 8 and Team Coast. Now, Coast did win a pretty commanding game one there. They're one game away to make it to the finals now. It took a bit. It was pretty even for a very long That's time. That's true. And then they started to run away with it once they got just team fights in their favor and more turrets. So these guys have honestly been fighting back and forth for the title of who's actually the best team outside of the LCS in North America. And I feel like popular opinion had it as Team 8 for a really long time, but it feels like they've been a little bit weaker recently. Yeah, Team 8 has been in kind of a slump for the last two weeks, and I was talking to some members of Coast, and they were like, man, I wish that this match was a week or two ago, because <laughs> they were not looking good in outside tournaments. And now they're showing up here today, and they still don't look like they're back to their completely normal selves. And you're yeah. right. These teams, they scrim LCS teams all the time, and the top LCS teams are like, well, we kind of have an idea of which one it is. Bottom LCS teams are kind of like, well, which one is it? And nobody seems, everybody's kind of divided. It's like, no, Coast is better. It's like, no, Team 8's better. Like, yeah. nobody knows for sure which one is the number one team. Well, and you kind of saw that actually in the summer promotion tournament as well. Coast, or sorry, uh, yeah, Coast picked Complexity, and then EG picked Cloud9, Tempest, and yeah. it looks like EG kind of made the better choice there and who they wanted to face against. Of course, they stuck uh, stuck in the LCS with that one. And uh, It is always going to be the sort of tough situation of whose style matches up better with yours, who's going to be on in a given day. Does a team choke in high-pressure situations or not? I mean, when they get on stage, is that rough for them? You got a team like Coast here who's like, yeah, we played in the LCS for like a year and a half on average. Kind of used to it. Probably, so that's one thing to keep in mind as well, is even if Ooh. they don't even win this one, you realize they've got the, uh, the ability to play those high-pressure situations. They gave it to them. Teammate banned wow. Cassidy instead of forcing Coast to ban Cassidy against them. So, that frees up the bans for complete just ban out the top laner here from Coast. Oh man, are they going to do it? Rise removed from Rux, smart choice, I think. This is, this is a team dynamic. Because of California Trolls and the way that he plays and the way that he does champ select and leads his team, you're going to want to put bans at top lane. You want him on something he's uncomfortable on, something that he can't make as many plays on and dominate the lane. Now he's doing that to Rux. He's saying, I won't let you dominate me. I'm going to take away your rise, find out what else is in your champion pool, and try to just whittle that down. So I have something that has a good matchup and I can play against you instead of lane swapping. Well, keep in mind, we had plenty of top lane bans last time around and it didn't help Cali Trolls very much. Team Coast still removing the mages away. And I wonder, like, what's the next top lane mage people learn? Like, when's Swain coming back? Quas will be the happiest guy in LCS when Swain comes back in the top lane. Back. Comes back. Hey, back. Swain was played at Worlds. That was. I actually loved that strategy. Timo was dots. played at Worlds. Yeah, and he, yeah. Well, actually, he lost. <laughs> Timo beat TSM the very first week in the spring split, though. So I'm just saying. And then everyone's like, oh my god, Timo's so overpowered. How do you play against it? No one, low and one's champion. Yeah. Oh, well. I think you guys should play it. There's a couple of players actually taught me in the LCS. They're like, oh yeah, no, we got we got that back pocket Teemo. In the right situation, we'll bring it out. And I'm like, uh-huh, sure. Yeah. They've yet to do it. Except for high, he's my homie. <laughs> uh, so I think the last ban here is going to be a Nidalee targeted at California Trolls. Just I said Gragas, Lulu, Nidalee, just take them off the board. And no, they don't. Well, they had the first pick the Yasuo away last Ooh. time, so they had some very real respect on Slushies. Okay. But yeah, oh. We, Whoa, no way. I would be surprised, okay. but it is. Okay. Nidalee's okay. still up, Lee Sin's still up. I don't think that hurts Santorin very much, and Ruck still gets whatever he wants. The Braum also still available. Now keep in mind, Braum was actually banned by Coast last time. And teammate had banned Morgana and left it up. I like this a lot, though. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I would grab. Yeah, they picked up the Elise first pick. A little uncharacteristic from Team 8. Usually they wanted something very comfortable. Top lane Elise. Top lane, yeah, no. Saw it this week. I don't think that's going to happen here from Cali Trolls. I thought he was going to pick the Nidalee first. Yeah. And he picks the uh, Elise away. Santorin still has Lee Sid. He's just as good on those two champions. He can also play Evelyn. But, yeah, they didn't really target anything. Like, you target so many bands at a lane, and then you don't first pick that lane. Yeah. Just whittle down that pool even more. It seems a little questionable. I agree. It does seem a little bit strange. And I, I do like the fact that they did adapt their bands very quickly to saying, you know, this worked for them in game one. We'll remove the Thresh and Rise. And maybe that's just all they needed was say, you know what? We're going to throw some bands in there and just say, this worked for you last time, but otherwise we're good. And just go for a completely blank slate otherwise in their champ select. The Caitlyn steal away, so they're going to reverse that matchup there. Maple Street now on the Caitlyn. The Morgana going to come in. Of course, Braum is up, so they're preemptively almost counterpicking that matchup. And they're leaving their solos for last. I 
you're going to have to pick both of them, and it's probably going to be Slushy once again in a blind pick here. Well, he, he didn't blind pick last time, though. He got the, the Yasuo against him. Yeah. He and he had a really harsh TF. He picked the Twisted Fate, yeah. Yeah. Still was a rough matchup. Ooh, Nami, I like this. this is a much better choice. Nami beats up on Morgana in lane. I've seen so many Brahms lose to Morg. I am glad Sheep didn't tunnel on that matchup. Yeah, big thing here though is you can't really bully around an Elise as Evelyn. You're gonna have to kind of stalk him. And then if they show up, the two on two kind of goes over in Evelyn's, I mean, yeah, Elise's favor. Mm. Evelyn has to get ganks when Elise isn't around. She's a much better fighter because of the CC. Yeah, That's yeah. One. I mean, you get bursted out, and especially with who might be in top lane, you should get, get somebody one shot there. So, something to think about. Will they go back for the Lee Sin top there for Cali Trolls, this time against Nidalee? We've seen Irelia be one of the big counter picks to the matchup. Uh, rumor has it Fiora is good there as well for Nidalee. Gonna stay with the Assassin, the all in. The Lee Sin still coming back for Cali Trolls. Oriana in for Slushi. I actually asked. I'm trying to remember who I asked, actually. It was one of the LCS top laners. And I said, hey, why is Lee Sin, like, gone from meta right now? Does no one play him anymore? And they were saying, yeah, it might have been Zion. And he's like, basically, oh, it only works if they're, like, really low damage and no wave clear. I think. So basically, just Renekton. it. What? Or, like, like or it wasn't Renekton, <laughs> but it was, like, it was, like one, of, one of the, like, really passive, like, top laners that don't do very much. That's not Renekton. Like, no, it's not. I don't know why I said Renekton. Uh... I just entirely forgot. Anyway, he said basically That's... low burst and low wave clear was was the requirements there. And I was like, like good Irelia? luck finding that. He might have been. I actually just don't remember. It's actually a useless story now. Because okay. I completely failed at delivering the <laughs> important part of the story. I talked with somebody and forgot what he told me. There you go, guys. Hashtag Freak Challenger Series <laughs> is a god. Story in a nutshell. Ziggs comes in, <laughs> though, for the mid lane. Golden glue. Took a minute for that one. Didn't even have useful information, but Ziggs comes out. So uh, I actually like this comp a lot, by the way. For Coast? For Coast, I do. Because you've again got the queen of the top lane, Nidalee. I feel like no matter what, it's going to be really hard for Cali Trolls to do anything there. You've got the wave clear to set up for the end game of Ziggs and Tristana going crazy. And that's a good comp. Yeah, and you, then in the bottom lane, you have a good matchup for you. It's Tristana with uh, Nami right. versus a Caitlyn, which is going to bully around the Tristana a little bit. Yeah. But then the Morgana part of that is the big thing, because Nami definitely outshines Morgana in that early game, depending on the bindings. And, you know, it can be a little bit of a skill matchup, but there's a little more point and click in Nami. Yeah, it just becomes a matchup that's really reliant on Caitlyn. Like, all the pressures on Maple Street to play around the harass, push down the health bar on Nami, not get hit too much by Trist, and then you've basically got to overextend to hit the Caitlyn, and that puts you into binding range. So again, it's about how many moves Maple can force out of the coast bottom lane, out of Mash and Sheep. We'll see what happens here. Kelly Troll's back on the top, Lee Sin as well. Gonna be fun to watch for. Can you hold up to a Nidalee? It's gonna be a tough one. See what happens. It's fight for King of the Challenger mm -hmm. coming in here. Fight to go to the finals, fight to come here and perform on the stage in those finals. It's true. That'll be during day two of Super Week. So if you do want to watch one of these two teams battle it out in the finals, that'll be Saturday's game. Basically a week from today is going to be the finals. Then after that, the playoffs. Yeah, will these guys be... Which one will be playing in that finals in seven days? Which one will be playing in the third, fourth place match in six? Maple Street. Walks right by Trist, doesn't know. What? Nope. A little bit of battle there. Explosion shot damage comes through. It's going to be more damage. Oh, he stuttered one of his auto attacks. Ooh. Oh, I didn't dodge it. Got him. This is actually a bit risky. He's in the bush He's going to get headshot, headshot soon. Like, I mean, it doesn't really Ooh. mean anything. They can recall pretty safely. Both no, don't do it. Yeah, stop the recall. Yeah. Oh, I don't think he saw Mash turn around. He still threw it out, though. Yep. Don't know how much difference it's going to make, though, because there's about 40 seconds before yeah. anything. It does almost guarantee there's no invade, though. Yes, that is true. Almost guaranteed. If you get complacent with that and then you get invaded on by four members in the last possible second. Ooh. It's always the risk. So, both support starting three health potions and a mana potion. Pretty normal stuff. Nidley traps are set up in the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Stop a little bit of the invade there. And kind of a big props to Santor in last game. Despite not getting, I think, a blue buff at all, he still performed really well. Yeah. He was pretty excellent. I got his. His own blue up second time around. Actually, Sheep going for the harass up against Dodo. Both of them fighting back and forth. 15 gold earned by Dodo. 
And Sheep only got 10, so early lead oh, he's going in. By like yeah. three. It's ticking up pretty quickly. That was actually, it's ticking up faster for Sheep than it was for Dodo. Yeah, his Sheep may be running uh, either deeper utility or some GP generates. Mm. There's a mystery here. I know a lot of players will go 21 defense, 9 utility. And then you miss out on the GP10, but you still get biscuits. Yeah, that's true. Two on twos are now coming out. So Cali Trolls, he's in a matchup in the top lane. Can he tilt it? Can he win it? He bought a shield early on to just deal with the auto attack harassment. But is that going to be what he needs to get that little edge and continue to duel the top lane? Lands the Q, goes up for the damage, jumps right back to the minion, doesn't even take damage from rocks. Nice. Gave him a back scratch. Yeah. He's on his way out. Hit the wind. He just hit where Lee Sin used to be. Forward's Bob's grabbing both his buffs, ends his route at the top side of the jungle. Same here for Santorin, so very equal for these junglers. But the difference is Elise is heading top, and there's no wards right now. This is not good for Rux. Oh, nope. Porpoise Pops. He's avoiding the bush because he doesn't want to walk into a trap if there is one. It's a very easy place to put a trap, very common place. And Rux is actually pretty far up here. Wow, this is really He's aggressive. Going aggressive. No jungle help whatsoever. He a lot of minions, though. Okay, how good can he flash a cocoon? Keeps the damage on Q misses, has to jump away to his teammate. Damage comes from Warbus Pops. Rux has pretty much not a lot of places to go. Inside track for the mid lane is there. Nice jump over. There's the repel, though. In the bottom oh, lane, though, more damage comes through. Mabel's Rick gets just jumped on and exploded there. Sheep gets the oh, kill. Rux him. flashes, but that's not going to be enough. Q comes out. One more hit to go, and Porpoise Pops claims a kill for himself. Yep, no assist on the back of that for California Trolls. So, the one that the kill that Coast got, it being first blood and more assists on the back, that's worth more, and now they're collapsing around Dodo. Uh, Dodo might just go extinct. Good black shield there, and it's going to be Sheep taking the aggro. Waiting for one more turret shot, takes the summoner heal and walks on out. Exactly perfect by Team Coast. Yep, Sheep using the heal from uh, Mashmi. He will tank enough damage that he's fine. Here comes a gank on the goal. Right into oh it. Oh my gosh, just barely hits a cocoon. Porpoise Pops wants the damage, repels on in, and says, you know what? I'll take turret aggro, but I'm going to back off. Slushy can't quite get the damage through. Wow. Just hyper aggressive plays here from everybody across the map. Rux, speaking of hyper aggression. Yeah, just going for hits underneath the turret as soon as he got back in the lane. Double long sword. Just long, or, sorry, uh, Doran's blade. That's they are long, though. They are. Swords. And they are swords. I wasn't really that wrong. It's just distracting that there's an actual item called Longsword. I can't believe they did that. Ah. I just like to force things three times. Why did they have to name an item after that? Ooh, he walked right up to Santorin. And he's getting some buff. good damage on a Slushy, though. He's uh, got to be pretty careful. Flash Q comes in, and Slushy had nowhere to go. Beautiful play by Coast Santorin. Yeah, the range of Evelyn and her detection, I'm pretty sure he saw her way before that. That's strange. Didn't quite respect the damage and yeah. Golden Glue. Getting a bit of the lead in the lane because, hey, there's no one to earn the gold or XP against him. This is a very strange game, but right now it means 1,200 gold for Team Coast, who have continued to make very good choices, especially Santorin. Yeah, Santorin, I like the fact that he ganked the bottom lane first because it's kind of a losing matchup in AD carry pressure. So he relieves that pressure, and now Tristan is completely fine. Mash me 1 0 1 already off to basically the same start he was last game. Another visit down bottom here. Ooh. Ooh. Walks into the binding on purpose. Look at him that one. He's trying to bait the all in. So the Sandor Santorin will be off on the side. There's no real all ins from Morg, uh, Caitlyn, but the damage comes in for Mashmi. Nice damage back and forth. Black Jewel already broken. But you can see Santorin really just forcing these, trying to get damage down and create pressure. His Evelyn. I don't know why he wanted Elise or Elise in so bad last time. The Evelyn's working great. Yeah, the first pick on the Elise is really strange to me for Porpoise Pops. You deny it from Santorin, but he still has other champions in his pool. Well, the thing is Porpoise is trying really hard to make the plays, though. Uh-oh, Slushy Ooh. does not have Flash still, but he's at least got a turret close enough by. Uh, but Porpoise Pops is trying really hard to make plays off of the Elise. Early boots pick up. Don't see him look bot lane. He didn't get the satchel charge off in the mid lane correctly, which cost them a bit. They do see them down bottom. Warpus Pops is going to have to back off of this because they're going to be a little, a little safer. Yeah, they're basically playing far enough back where they say, if Elise shows, we can run away in time with Rocket Jump. And otherwise, playing safe unless they have their own jungler around. Top lane, just a little check up here. 
Kali trolls and Rux just going even, but he's still pushing on top of him. Pick available in the junglers on just the right side of the jungle. Their buffs are starting up again. About a couple seconds here. Mm -hmm. He's level sixes. Santorin. Level six off this. It's a good spike for Evelyn players everywhere to get that ultimate. Orbis pops. Gonna be in a similar situation. I don't think he quite hit six off this. Maybe after the little baby ones, but it doesn't really matter for Elise anyway. Yeah, her power spike at six isn't that great. Extra Spider Link, it's kind of nice. It's a little bit more damage, a little bit more durability when tanking turrets, etc. It's, it's decent, but it's not like an extra ability in a team fight. Nope. In comparison to where her power was before, yeah. where it is now, it's kind of a little blip. It's okay. Still plenty strong as we're seeing her getting picked every time. All the same. The bot lane actually, I'm very surprised at, and teammate, their bot lane is, of course they did get killed earlier on, but they are down in CS in a matchup they should arguably would be winning with the Caitlyn pickup here. They're a little far forward. Santorin left, and they're going to see Evelyn now. Oh, Santorin's got to be a bit careful. She's the ward and says, you know what, I actually can't really punch Maple Street in the face right now. I'm surprised there isn't actually a trap in that bush. Oh! Cocoon's in this one, though. Santorin's got to be real careful. Great black shield from Dodo. And can they keep chasing? There's the repel. There's more damage coming through. Great buster shot. But there comes Cali Trolls. They find Santorin. He finally goes down. Sheep's got to flash the wall. Does so. Gets out. But still the one for zero. Mega Inferno Bomb from Golden Blue hit nobody. Yeah. Threw it into the bush thinking they'd still fight there. But the fight had already moved off to the right. So that means a kill and maybe even more for Team 8 right here. Rux has not come down to defend this. Instead, basically all of Team 8 just all in this dragon. They need the gold back in this game. That might have been just what they needed to get back in. Yep, they're going to jump it back up to about even in gold. But they're going to have some damage on that top turret. The extra waves are going to go in their favor for Coast. Cali Troll is now down about 10 CS. Then a little more once he gets back to lane. Was even keep going in the matchup though, because he was doing just fine in the one on one. He took that break to go and roam and make some plays elsewhere. He got to go back and buy a bunch more attack damage. Rux did get his turret for that roam though. Yeah. Here's the thing too is when you're a top lane shot caller, your teleporting is pretty damn frequent. You're always trying to make the play because you can't just watch the bottom lane and be like, all right, now you guys go. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's kind of like, I'm going and he's going now. Well, a bit of an idle lead for Kali Trolls, who had just gone back to buy, and Rux has got to be pretty careful. Cocoon, will it land? Does not quite, and Santorin waiting in the wings to defend with the red buff. Golden Glue around as well, but this is a blue buff attempt here. Teammate took plenty of time to start this one out. Up into the brush it goes. Santorin is around, but blue goes to Slushi pretty cleanly. Nicely done, teammate. Yeah, and Rux just applying some pressure because he got the turret, and the fact that that allows you to contest the blue buff pretty easily. Team Coast back into the lead. But now, just continuing to push. We're seeing this turret not in a very good spot. That was the recall from Team 8, which really doesn't make them very happy here. Bumper's Pops tries to harass them out, but Coast will stick around for the turret. Looks like they will do so, and the second turret of the game now goes for Team Coast just off of their basic lanes. Yeah, they push these lanes so quickly, and it kind of happened last game too, ahead in turrets. And then Team 8 just couldn't reclaim anything with their composition. Kelly Trolls tries to pick something in the top lane, but just can't really do it. Rux comes back in time. Sheep gets rid of the pink cord as well, and now this means more ganks available for Santorin, whose ulti just came back up. And he's actually going straight up that river towards Kali Trolls. Kali's a little overextended now. Oh, uh -oh. Found him. Red buff is there. Kali Trolls going to hop back. Great kick. Catches Rux with it as well. He's going to get himself out of that one. Required ulti right there. That looked awesome. Yeah, it did. He, he kicked the Evelyn back and it hit Nidalee, but it flipped her around. So it's like it hit her in the face <laughs> and spun her. Aw, silly cat. She tried to dodge the Evelyn, but could not do so. It's kind of hard to dodge a gigantic woman. Where are your cat light reflexes now, huh? Yeah. Rux. He tried leaping. Slow. Didn't work. Tail got caught. If only she were a lizard, you could shed the tail and just keep going. Yeah. Oh, man. That always freaked me out when I was little. The tail's gone. Ah! ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, wave crystal still happening in the bot lane, though. Looks Ooh. like teammate pretty well undisturbed there. Yeah, these bindings from Dodo. They're close. Yeah, they need to start landing, though, if they want to get back into this game in the spot lane. 
Even if they do land, it's still, it's still gonna be a hard time. You know what's crazy, actually, is how much better Coast seem to be at manipulating their minion waves. Because, realize a teammate, like, they got a kill and a dragon, and in the aftermath, lost two turrets. Like, no. Coast has gone back to buy, haven't lost turrets for buying. Whenever Coast goes back, like, whenever a teammate's gone back, they've given up objectives now this time around. And it's actually a flip of last time where Coast got greedy, didn't push minions out, and lost a Baron for it. It's a skill you've really got to, like, have is, look, after an objective, you actually want to go back to your lane again, clear another wave, and then recall. Yep. Set it up. We see Santorin doing what he does best, baiting jungles. And there it is. Hey, it goes in for his wobs. <coughs> Cocoon comes out. Half HP on both these guys. Ulti comes up as well. There's no goal. has got nowhere to go. Ziggs ulti does not land. Santorin one hit from dead. Gets the heal, but not in time. Slushy claims the kill. Ooh, Golden Glue was trying to be a god, and he threw his Mega Inferno Bomb at the Golems. He's a little bit too early on it, though, as well. Now, Golden Glue's got to be real careful. Already burns his Flash and his heal to get out. Satchel Charge gets him a bit farther away. Kali Trolls and Rux show up. Nothing gained there. Yeah, get his Flash and his heal. Dragon in a minute 40, and Golden! Dodo really Whoa. wants it. Gets the shield, gets away. Mash is going to trade back when Hops on away, but Sheep now has nowhere to go. Bubble onto one. There's the Tidal Wave. That actually will be enough to disengage. Enough for the knock up there. Flash gets blown. Rux. Took down uh, Orpus Pops. It's a very scattered <laughs> fight. <laughs> well, he played that one right. Rest now he wants Slushy. That's a lot of damage. He's got to be careful, though. Sheep off on the side. Has the slows. This is 2v3. It's a bit risky to go for this. Yeah. Kick from Cali Trolls is available. There's so All much right, now damage. He's going, he's he's going go for on, this. He's going to go on this once you're hunted. Uh, Ooh. Oh. Once you're hunted, there's just huge bursts of damage that come through on Nidalee's kid. It's very rewarding to hit a spear or I guess a javelin or a trap. They are not spears. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, javelins. I know. I'm I'm on that train <laughs> no. as well. Yeah. Hey man, you're the one who's, who pronounces it Aegis. So Aegis. I know you got. I know. You got the uh, technically correct thing going for you. <laughs> Aegis, Mana. Aegis is true as well. It is true. It's just like Zenith and Zenith. Man. Up and uh, down. And he flashes. No, down. No. That'd Wait, be silly. He did flash. He did eventually flash that. Who did? Sorry? Rux did. Oh, OK. Because his flash is down. And I remember him. Oh, yeah. At the end, yeah. Yeah, he flashes right after that play. Because he's like, I don't want to be here. And flashes, but he doesn't actually go. We didn't show it, though. So it never uh, happened. Right. Yeah, yeah, never mind. That's totally up right now. Best player uh, world. There you go. Hey, man, he made some good picks or, uh, so far in this game, and he got an out of for it, so I can't be too sad about it. Overall, looking good. Team Coast already grouped up well in time for Dragon. Pink Ward is down. Ward's all swept away. And the zoning from the explosive minefield. And teammate are actually going to go for the top lane out of turret as a response to this oh, one. Now comes the, the teleport. He's not going to be there in time. Dragon goes over, so teammate just picking a fight for no reason here. They didn't, that was suspect. Didn't collapse around it correctly. Dodo still had his flash and his... Uh, Soul Shackles available. So he could have forced a fight if they wanted to. It was just a scattered call on that one. That's uh, just a very strange choice. They can precious out of turret. Oh, you gotta be careful, Mash Me and Sheep. Golden might try to clear the wave. It's a smiley face. Woo. There aren't many minions left in that one, actually. Uh, mid tier two, though, has a lot of minions here. Big damage coming in. Rocks Golden Glue nearby as well. Nice zoning minefield, and teammate can't do much about it. Looks like teammate don't stay for the bot turret, though. Mash really wants his fight, though. Tidal Wave comes across. They knock back Dota. They all in Maple. Maple's going to be going down. He can't see him yet, though. And now the Rocket Shop one more time. Dodo also going to fall in a straight two on two. That fight goes over. But now Golden Glue's got to be a bit careful. Looks in for Slushies. Kylie Trolls is around. Doesn't land the Q. Doesn't matter. Gets the kill either way. Maple Street and Dodo just haven't been looking like their old selves. They're yeah. losing to Mash and Sheep. Granted, it's a very, very damn good bot lane. Mm -hmm. But man, it's not looking good for them. Mash just keeps out playing. He does have those buster shots. Looks fantastic with the placement of that one. And the overall, this bottom lane's just been outshining. You're seeing minions being pushed into the turret, the jungle being controlled as well. There's the first pink ward of many for that team, and they're going to look pretty all right. The Teammate, collapse. do you want this mid turret? But here comes Santorin and Rux. They go all in for Slushy, who does go down. Santorin stays alive throughout the whole thing. And in comes Mash. Another kill comes through. 5-0-1 on Tristana. Team Coast looking very much like the better team. And Mash me on that hyperscaling AD carry. He played Caitlyn last game, bullied a Tristana around. Now he's playing Tristana, he's bullying a Caitlyn around. 
Yeah. Flipped Good freaking player. Flipped the matchup with some help from Santorin. Both games. Just the teamwork of Coast just seems to be on a higher level right now than teammates. The overall moves just have been really, really good for these guys. A couple of missteps once again for teammate, but maybe they can pull it on back. These guys have shown the ability to rally back in the mid game. Again, I want to call attention to that Baron play just from the first game because that was so smart. And maybe something like that is going to be up the sleeves here for teammate. If Cali Trolls can make the shots and call them properly, they can maybe get back in. But there is a large item disparity to make up right now. When Rux will beat Cali Trolls in the one-on-one, -on -one, and Maple Tree just does not have the damage of Mash. No, he does not. He just has the Infinity Edge completed. Mash almost has an entire completed item over him. As soon as he gets that IE done. Spelling disaster now for teammate. Next okay. Dragon. They have a lot of zoning tools for Coast. Yeah, and they're playing a, a smart conservative game, much like the first time around. The, that first game had a lot of kills, largely because teammate kept trying to fight, as they are in this game as well. And Coast are playing a generally very controlled style. They get the minion waves under control, by and large. They are able to rely on Rux's advantageous split push there, because Cali, to be honest, doesn't. I don't feel like he can win those one on one battles very well. It's just that Rux wave clears and leaves. And so Coast keep creating pressure everywhere. It's just the push and the control of the jungle that Coast has is exercising. Finding lands, but overall, Sheep just walks away with the same HP. Jungle control here. It'll be a four on three in the bottom lane. If Slushy makes it here, and they can't see it. Oh, mash. Finding gets mashed. Dodo gets some damage down, but just not much else gained for these guys. There's no combos coming out here either. Yeah. I don't see a binding into a trap. Well, that one's out of range. Oh, Maple Tree's oh, got to be real careful. He's almost his entire health bar. Ulti comes out onto Dodo to prevent any ultis from coming across for himself. Oh, Actually, bomb. times it out. Ziggs bomb claims Maple Street. Now, Dodo dived on as well. Mash takes a binding, but who cares? Santorin's got to get away from this. He's fine. He'll live. It's a trap. Into a trap. He'll still live. Now, Cali Trolls versus Rux in this top lane. Big damage comes out. Rux already takes the first little bit of damage down. Nice kick into the queue as well, but Cali looks like he will not keep chasing. He will keep chasing. Forces the flash away from Rux, actually. Great fight by the Lee Sin. Oh, he gets the Q! Oh, the flash Q! Cali Trolls, I take it back. You can win the one-on-one. -on -one. That was beautiful. That's exactly what teammate needs right now, is somebody who can duel that split pusher and come out on top. All right, well, I take back everything bad I said about that. The Lee Sin top going to work here. Shockwave going to miss, though, from Slushy. That is something he would have wanted there, but not going to happen. But at least teammate can say, look, the top lane dual matchup is winning, and it will continue to win. This will actually only get better for Cali Trolls now. Once you get that first kill, man, you keep getting more. So something for teammate to rely on now, that is big. They just have to focus on not giving up kills in the bottom lane or the mid. And there's 50 seconds on the Dragon now. The teleports will be up, but no flashes for both of these top laners. Cali Trolls very risk averse, you can see. As you mentioned, no flash available. It says, Santorin might be here. I'm out. Setting up for the Dragon. At least attempting to here from Dodo. And he stops it. He's leaving it up for uh, Rux for the duel. Yep. Coast identifies how well teammate can play around that. Because Cali Trolls can push fast, can kill turrets fast, and can dive Rux under his turret. So they require him to have some kind of edge in that matchup. It's a very smart choice. He's going to have the auto attack harass just multiplied. Yeah. It's actually a pretty big damage source. Because they fight fairly long battles. Because there's so much lifesteal and healing. Uh, it's not like an 80 carry to 80 carry battle where you die in four attacks. Coast is always in the dragon pit first, which allows Ziggs to kind of zone. But I like this move from Team 8. Because you, you can't get zoned out when you're already in by a Ziggs. They kind of give up pressure, and there's the zoning. There you go. Mine kills down on one side. Bouncing bombs coming down the other, potentially. Dodo down to half HP right here. This is very close to dead. Q comes out. The spike goes in. Santorin going to claim that one. Kalitro's got to be careful. Flash bubble not quite going to land. Kalitro's though. Shockwave pulls in Santorin. Ziggs bomb on the three. Repel comes in to dodge that one. Now Mash chases in for Maple. Finds two kills already. Kalitro's in the back line, but he has only been able to pick up one for himself. Javelin comes out. Third kill for Team Coast plus the Dragon. It's a three for one and a Dragon in favor of Team Coast. And Baron are where the pings are right now. 
They're gonna go straight for this. Yeah. Well, I'm confused by a teammate's choice to actually defend the dragon fight. As we talked about in between the games, you can just go for option B as your opponents go for option A. Take down that top lane turret for a dragon. Equal trade, get some extra farm. But they chose to five on five against a team that is ahead in basically every single lane. And they chose to go for the five on five anyway. Team Co is going to earn themselves this Baron off the very clean team fight. And there they go. It's a late game for Tristana as well. 7 yep. zero, 3 two items in. He's about to go for that third one. I mean, 22 minutes in, two items AD carry is plenty fast. Yeah. They don't even contest it with their jungler. He's not even far enough up to even attempt a smite. And the jukes here from Cali Trolls are pretty good. He kicks Mash to get him out of the fight. Mash still finds his way back in on all the cleanup after the tidal wave. Instead, decides that Cali Trolls is the one that needs to go down last. Man, the way that that fight just broke out. Teammate, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, all right, we'll let you take the dragon, then we'll fight you afterwards, which is never a good decision. Yeah, that's twice now it's happened. Yeah. First time it was Cali Trolls teeping down to a ward as the dragon went down. Second time was them just w waiting and then walking through a minefield to do so. I, I am a little disappointed in teammates' play right now. I know they're typically a better team, but it's just not been very smart choices by the crew. Today, anyway. They have already qualified for the playoffs. So no matter what, you're going to see more of them. When they're playing losing. seeding is the problem. And exactly. Depending on where you seed, like you could have a really, really rough first round opponent. Team Coast already have a first round bye, but they can guarantee a first place seed in the playoffs if they can win the whole thing again. Looks like they're poised to do so here. They could go up too well, take the semifinal. Get a little bit more of that LCS stage experience, because why not? It's what you're going to need for the promotion tournament. True. A lot on the line there. Get the nerves out. Get more rotations on the stage. Big damage going off from this turret. You can see Golden Blue deals plenty. Mash going to do the rest. There we go. Five turrets to two now. 13 kills to seven. Only 24 minutes in. They're already pushing him with Baron buff. There's just so much here for Coast to work with. The Siege, the Wave Clear, some poke, but also some great tower pushing ability. And look at that, it goes down so quickly. Half HP off one wave. This is almost disaster for teammates. Very, very close. Oh! oh. Ziggle's not up. Nope. Kate right, we have a time. Big damage on the Rux though. Could they shockwave him in? I feel like they should have. Oh. They don't do it in time. He gets out with the Mikhails. And they just pick up Cali Trolls. There's the engage a little bit later on. They've already picked up one kill. They'll pick up their third now. It's three so far for Mash. Goes in for Porpoise Pops. He's going to back out. Sheep's going to tank the ulti. That is an inhibitor down at 25 minutes though. They're going to go straight for this inhibitor. And they have so much tower pushing ability. They might actually just go for the Nexus and try to end the game. Wow, a 25 minute victory over Team A. If this is giving to you guys that Team Coast is the best challenger team in NA right now, I'm not sure what else will, but these guys have won the. <laughs> they won Summer 1. They're poised into the finals of Summer 2 right there. They're knocking down all the good teams time and time again. And the next is now going to fall in just 25 and a half minutes. Very, very strong victory. Great gameplay by these guys. And that's a 2 0. They're going to be here next week to yep. compete in the finals. Team A will drop down to a third, fourth place match. But man, that game, Team Coast, about 25 minute game there over one of their hardest opponents you could possibly have in the Challenger Series. And they looked flawless. They looked absolutely great. And you said it a little bit earlier. These guys scrim LCS teams, both these teams. Again, they're considered top dog in the Challenger circuit. LCS teams like to scrim them because, well, your strats aren't going to backfire. You're not going to play them anytime soon, necessarily. And they're still good enough that the practice is worth it. So these guys have been training against the region's best for a while. They put it all on the line right here. You're seeing how good a team like Coast is. And they're like, all right, just one more step on the way to joining the LCS. And hey, these guys look good. Yeah, they look really, really good. And I mean, there's four former LCS pros on Team Coast. The exception would be Santorin. Yep. Actually, no, no, no. It's not. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And he was great yeah, that game. He, he's played on the stage, though. Still, hasn't yeah, played in the LCS. He's, he's looking he's, for it. He's played on the LCS stage before. He's pulling a broken shard, though. Okay. Coming over from Europe, wants to make it to the NALCS. 
Honestly, though, down the line, right, great players. We've seen some of these guys catch flack, right? MASH was removed from the old Coast lineup back in the day when they replaced him with Wiz Fusion. Um, you saw Sheep get relegated from XDG. Rux just played a very short stint there with Team Curse. They brought someone else on afterwards. Golden Glue filled in for Dig. They brought him out. They took him out and they put Scara back in in the playoffs, right? All of these guys have, like, had their little glimpses and then had it, the L's just taken away from them for various reasons. And now you put them all together, but they're meshing real well. This is a real contender. Yeah, they all had a little bit of a taste, and now they're really hungry for it. Yeah, they had their dessert before their dinner, but now Ooh. it's meal time, and they're eating champions for breakfast. I don't know why I switched meals on that one. But after that match, here's a snapshot of the Summer 2 Series right now. Team Coast has advanced to the finals in the LCS studios in LA. On August 2nd, they will face the winners of tomorrow's match between Curse Academy and Team Law Pro. And whoever loses that match will face Team 8 in the battle for third place on August 1st. But before that best of three match, there are more LCS games tomorrow to close out Week 10. It all starts with the Evil Geniuses against Curse, and then Cloud9 versus LMQ. Then Team Solo Mid faces Counterlogic Gaming and Dignitas Battles Complexity. It all starts at 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 9 p.m. Central European Summer Time. So with that, we've reached the end of our time together tonight. But before we go, I want to say thanks again to our friends at Coca-Cola. Now for myself, Zyrene, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching, good night, and GG. This mid turret, but here comes Santorin and Rux. They go all in for Slushy, who does go down. Santorin stays alive throughout the whole thing. And in comes Mash. Another kill comes through. 5 0 1 on Tristana. Great fight by the Lee Sin. Oh, he gets the Q. Oh, the flash Q. Cali trolls a take it back. You can win the one on one. That was beautiful. Six bomb on the three. Repel comes in to dodge that one. Now Mash chases in for Maple. Finds two kills already. Cali trolls in the back line, but he has only been able to pick up one for himself. Big damage to Rex, though. Could they shockwave him in? I feel like they should have. Oh. They don't do it in time. He gets out with the Mikhails, and they just pick up Cali trolls. There's the engage a little bit later on. They've already picked up one kill. They'll pick up their third now.